Let's get to the last question. It goes like this. I'd like to hear you speak about the function of dreams. Some people recall them, others don't. Some think they're critical to healthy mental functioning, others don't. I personally pay a great deal of attention to dreams and find them vastly informative, but I'm in the minority amongst my friends and acquaintances. In fact, I suspect many people are disturbed by their dream imagery. Having listened to you discuss confabulation this week, I think the way people distort their memory of dreams could be the most common example of confabulation I can produce. What do you think is the role of dreams in our lives? Oi. Again, uh, the mentors have chosen questions for me this week, which are truly impossible to answer in, 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 um, in, the, in the amount of time available. Um, what do I think about dreams? Well, I've got news for you. I have researched the brain mechanisms of dreaming for 30 years. In fact, the main um, thrust of my early scientific work was just that, the brain mechanisms of dreaming. So... Um, I can't possibly tell you everything I've learned in the last 30 years and everything that I think um, about the part that dreams play in our mental lives. But I'll just say this. When I came into this field in the, in the mid-1980s, the general um, uh, belief among my scientific colleagues was that dreams are froth, uh, that dreams are meaningless, that dreams are uh, essentially, inherently mindless, um, meaningless phenomena. Um, and the view was held uh, by Alan Hobson uh, at the time. Uh, he put it rather well. He said, you, of course, you can project meaning into dreams in the same way as you can project meaning into a Rorschach ink blot. Um, you know, you look at this ink blot and you say, oh, uh, I think it's a vagina. You know, uh, uh, it makes me feel, uh, it makes me think uh, of vaginas. Um, that doesn't mean that the ink blot is a vagina or that there was any intention behind the person who made the ink blot to make a vagina. They were just squashing the, you know, the ink between the, the folding the paper. Um, it's it's in the it's in the um, uh, in the observer uh, in the person who after the fact comes to the thing that they project meaning onto it. That was the view in the 1980s that dreams were inherently meaningless uh, and we project meaning onto them. Dreams are not themselves. Uh, mental products um, that, 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 that intrinsically convey a meaning or motivation. So that was uh, in stark contrast to the views that had dominated in previous decades in the 20th century, derived from the Freudian psychoanalytical and other um, psychological traditions. Why did Hobson and his uh, lot uh, think that? It's because they had identified a part of the brain that generates dreams uh, in the pons, uh, it's called the mesopontine tegmentum. Uh, it, 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 it's uh, the source cells of uh, a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine, which just randomly activates the whole brain automatically every 90 minutes during rapid eye movement or REM sleep. Um, and if dreams are generated by this automatic switch that just clicks on every 90 minutes uh, and are generated by a brain structure which can't possibly... Um, uh, uh, be um, uh, the correlate of the complicated motivational uh, mental gymnastics uh, that that Freudians uh, thought were the causes, uh, the, the 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 causal mechanisms of dreams. Uh, then the, it, 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 it's it's all nonsense. Was the conclusion that dreams are intrinsically meaningless? Random firings of neurons uh, uh, generated by um, an, an, an intrinsically mindless part of the brain automatically. Um, and mechanistically. Now, what my own research showed um, in the 1990s was that that part of the brain that generates REM sleep is not the part of the brain that generates dreams. Um, I was able to show in patients with brain lesions, uh, patients who had damage to the part of the brain that uh, generates REM sleep, that they didn't have REM sleep, but they did have dreams. And conversely, there were patients with damage to higher brain structures uh, who didn't have dreams, but did have REM sleep. So that's called a double dissociation. Damage here leads to loss of dreaming and preservation of REM sleep. Damage here leads to loss of REM sleep and preservation of dreaming. Therefore, they're two different things. Um, and the question then became, well, what is the part of the brain that generates the dreams as opposed to the REM sleep? And what does that teach us about dreams? Well, the part of the brain, the core part of the brain that generates dreams, wait for it, is the seeking system. 
that dopaminergic motivational intentionality system uh, that you learned about uh, last week. And uh, there's all sorts of evidence for that. Single cell recordings show that, that, uh, that uh, 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 those neurons fire at their most intensive rate during dreaming sleep. Um, a, a method called microdialysis shows that the release of dopamine uh, at the terminals of those neurons um, is maximal during dreaming sleep. Uh, functional imaging studies show that that circuit is lit up like a Christmas tree during dreaming sleep. I told you about the lesion studies. Damage to that system leads to a complete inability to dream. Uh, there are also pharmacological studies which show that if you increase dopamine levels, you increase dreaming. If you block dopamine levels, you block dreaming. So um, that's the essential basis of everything that I've since done uh, and, and of my beliefs about dreams, which is that they are intrinsically mental, motivated, and meaning-seeking states. Um, the most meaning-making part of the brain uh, that there is, um, is, uh, uh, is the part of the brain that fundamentally generates dreams. Of course, there's a lot more to be said, uh, but on the basis of just that, um, I can tell you that I, for one, uh, on an, on an evidence-based um, evidence grounds, I, for one, think that there's every reason to believe, just from the neuroscience, that dreams are motivated, meaningful mental states. Uh, but I also know, um, as a person who dreams himself, and as a person who has worked with uh, the dreams of others, uh, that from, from psychological evidence too, uh, dreams are, are extremely um, enlightening um, about what it is that makes us tick what it is that's on our minds, what it is that matters to us. And um, uh, uh, that at least gives you a pointer um, as to where my thoughts would go if I were to be able to answer this, uh, this question comprehensively. But uh, do please Google my name and dreams, or, 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 or uh, maybe Google Psalms, Brain Mechanisms of Dreaming, and then you'll get some, some articles which will give you more information about this. Okay, that's the end of week five. Uh, as always, I really enjoy reading and thinking about and, and answering these questions, so keep them coming. Thanks very much. Bye-bye till next week.